Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavanaugh's Corner. I want to say thank you for coming back to my channel, um, checking out this video. Uh, today, I'm filming this uh, the weekend of Memorial Day 2016, and I want to do, uh, review a movie that is not new, but is very, very close to my heart, and uh, that is Saving Private Ryan. Um, it, I don't know if I'd call it the greatest war movie ever made, but it's definitely up there. Um, it's definitely, I think, the best World War II movie, um, even though there's, there's quite a lot of competition out there. I think it really is the best in terms of uh, looking at the, uh, um, the European uh, conflict that happened during World War II. Um, it's very personal to me uh, because my grandfather actually fought um, in World War II and he also was on uh, Omaha Beach in Normandy and, and that's that part kind of plays a major role in this film and I think Spielberg uh, does basically the the best job of displaying what that actually looked like um, he went to great lengths to detail things that no other filmmaker had really done until this one um, it's it's a phenomenal movie. It's an emotionally draining movie. Um, it's not a movie that I go back and revisit very often. Actually, I've only seen it from beginning to end twice. And one of those times was actually, it was on, uh, I want to say it was on ABC. It was on local programming, so it was actually kind of edited. And I say kind of edited because even edited, this movie is kind of hard to watch. But it's a very uh, a very realistically violent film. And I think that's what hits home so much with this movie is the fact that it is a it is a scarily realistic film in terms of war violence. Uh, it is brutal in a sense that what happens when you get shot, really, what happens in this movie, you see it. Uh, you know, people bleed out uh, just from one bullet wound. It's not like these other movies where guys get shot two or three times, like oh, I'm okay, no big deal. It's like, no, you're gonna die. Um, especially in the heat of battle, and you get shot by a M1 Garand, uh, that 30 odd six is gonna do some damage, and you're gonna die. And that's what happens in this movie. A lot of people die. That's war. Uh, war is definitely the worst thing in the world. Uh, and that's something my grandfather would always say, war is the worst thing in the world. And this movie is kind of the displayer of that. Uh, it's definitely the signifier of, of, of war. Um, the movie is, is obviously, as I mentioned before, is directed by Steven Spielberg. And basically it's just the story of an army commander that is put in charge of a troop of guys that is there to is it's their mission to rescue a, uh, a a private in the also in the army that is kind of not only in harm's way but he's also the last of three brothers um, that have been killed in, in in action and he's the last one of the three and uh, it's kind of a, a rule that if you have siblings if your other siblings are dead they literally bring you back home so your parents have some sort of child there. This is a thing that actually happened uh, in World War II and other wars. And it still exists today where if you are an only child, um, it's kind of, you know, so what? But if you are multiple, if you are one of many or one of uh, two, I think, uh, if your other sibling dies in combat, they get you the hell out of there. And that is basically their job, is to get this guy, tell him the bad news, and then get him the hell out of there. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much the whole story, more or less. Uh, the film starts out, uh, Tom Hanks is the main character in the film. And his part, you basically see the uh, D-Day uh, beach landing on Omaha uh, in Normandy. Normandy, France, I should say, for those of you that are not familiar with World War II. Uh, you kind of see it from his eyes, and it may just be the most violent scene in film history. And I know people say, ah, oh, no, there's a lot more violent. No, this is pretty much the most brutal scene in film history. Um, there are some competitors out there, but this one here, in my opinion, uh, coming from a person that uh, once was actually there, my grandfather was lucky enough to see this movie uh, when it was out in theaters, even though he was up there in age. 
he was alive and well and was actually invited to see the film for free since he was actually there. Um, he was invited by the, the filmmakers to see the film. Uh, it was a beautiful thing that they did for him. And uh, he had to leave the movie theater. He actually walked out of the movie theater uh, after about two minutes of that beach landing because it was too close. And when someone is physically there at a historical event, which it is, it is a historical event, um, and something is a little bit too detailed, uh, you can get kind of freaked out. And that's what happened to my grandfather. He got, he got seriously freaked out and had to leave. Um, uh, but pretty much, he, um, he went back and, and in the end enjoyed the movie, but did not enjoy it on the level of a film. He enjoyed it on the level of a, of a tribute, um, a tribute to comrades of his that had fallen in battle. And any time I'd ever ask him, you know, what was this like, he'd just say, watch that movie. That's pretty much what it's like. So I look at this film as, as not only as a, 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 a portrait of, of war and what it is, but it's also a, uh, it's a pretty realistic movie. Um, and it's, it's gotten some flack because I, I do have to admit, the film does have, uh, again, a kind of very, very thin story. Um, you're not really watching it for the story. I guess you're watching it to kind of see what happens. Um, the characters in it are kind of cliched. That's my one gripe with the film. I really can't talk about anything else in a negative way in this movie. But uh, the acting is wonderful, but the, the characters in the film are very kind of uh, blasé war film characters. And I guess that's pretty much what you're left with when you're making a war movie. But I think they could have added a little more character to some of the, the main characters. Funny enough, uh, Tom Hanks, his character in this movie, is a very strong-willed, but also you can tell he's, he's putting on a show. Uh, you can tell he's, in, in his core, he's not okay. Um, but then again, who would be uh, in that situation? I know my grandfather after World War II would basically have PTSD moments, and they didn't call it PTSD back then. It was called like shell shock, and it was kind of just shrugged off. Now today, I mean, you go to a psychiatrist for this shit, but um, he didn't have the luxury of that. He would just be awake all night screaming and sweating, and uh, my grandmother would have to tend to him because he would wake up in the middle of the night just screaming. Um, and it's it's something that stays with you, and I think the film does a uh, a marvelous job of showing how you kind of have to laugh it off in the moment because it's the reality of the situation. You can't get out of uh, can't get out of where you're at. Um, but it, it is a it is a phenomenal movie. Uh, a lot of people that I've talked to complain about the shaky cam in the film. It's kind of funny because it's one of only one of only I think one or two movies that Steven Spielberg has ever done that uh, actually utilizes kind of like a, a handheld camera for an extended period of time. But it's done on purpose, and even Spielberg has said it in an interview where he said he wanted to have so like the he wanted to have the film shot so as if the camera was actually on the battlefield and how if a guy had a camera at Normandy, what would he shot? What would he have shot it like? And of course he's gonna be shaking the shooting at him, you know? If you're a cameraman and you're getting shot at, you're gonna be ducking, you're gonna be low to the ground, you're not gonna you're gonna die if you stand up. So everything's very low to the ground and shaky because that's what a cameraman would be doing in that situation. You'd be low, you'd be staying as low to the ground as you can so you don't get shot, and you'd also be shaken because you're scared shitless at that point. So um, I would be in the same way if I had to record, you know, a, a battle. Um, I definitely wouldn't be standing still or sh or holding a camera steady. I'm gonna be shaking like a son of a bitch. Um, that's one thing. Uh, so I think it's a very purposeful cinematography, but it does get a little annoying, I will admit, but it's done on purpose, and once you understand the fact that it's done that way on purpose, kind of gives it a, a whole new light, um, and I really do enjoy the look of the film because it is a very gritty looking film, but it also has a beautiful kind of context, but war is not beautiful, so neither should the film look beautiful. Um, but again, it's a Spielberg film, and again, Spielberg is Spielberg. He's a master at what he does, so the movie does look great, but it looks great in a sense that it kind of shouldn't look great, if you know what I mean. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, the only other thing I could say it's like a gripe about this movie 
is that the music in the film isn't very memorable, but it's also kind of minimal. There's not a lot of music in the movie. Um, a lot of scenes are just kind of quiet. Um, and uh, again, that's purposeful because you're not going to have an orchestra out on, uh, you know, in, in the middle of a battle. It, and it makes the movie much more intense. They only use the music in, in very certain parts. And I think it's done very purposefully and very well. Uh, but the music, again, you don't walk out humming the tune, and it's not supposed to be that way because, again, it's a war movie meant to honor our veterans and also uh, provide a very deadly serious uh, story. So obviously you're not going to be wanting a catchy tune. Um, but in the end, uh, Saving Private Ryan, uh, to me, is, is, I mean, in my opinion, it's the best World War II movie ever made. And it's that way because it is a, uh, a movie that is not meant to glorify violence. It's not meant to uh, make America look good or anything like that. It's meant to honor people and to honor people that were there and uh, that sacrificed their lives. And uh, like I said, I was lucky enough to have my grandfather come back. And uh, if after watching the movie a few times... Uh, you think, my God, how the hell did that happen? Because so many people died, and uh, it's just amazing that anybody could survive through anything um, in that war. Just incredible. Uh, it's uh, it's a great film. It's worth watching. It's worth buying, and it's worth watching again. Um, of course, if you can stomach it, because uh, it is not an easy film. Not an easy film to get through in more ways than one. And uh, I have yet to watch the film uh, and not find myself crying by the end of it. So that's it for today, guys. I uh, just want to say thank you for coming back. If you like this video, uh, then hit the like button. If, uh, if you enjoyed these kind of reviews, then uh, subscribe to my channel, please. And also, I have a, a link to my Patreon account uh, down in the description. So if you want to fund my channel even further, um, you can actually uh, directly contribute, and I will acknowledge you in, uh, in the videos if you do that. So thank you very much for, uh, for tuning back into Kavanaugh's Corner. As always, I'm Andrew Kavanaugh. I want to wish you all good night, and I want to say thank you to all the veterans out there that are watching this video. God bless you, and uh, I wish you all the best. Good night.